Welcome to ECE 761 Robotics Lecture Number 7, Path Planning. So where we're at is I can specify the tip of the position of the robot. I can specify the joint angles using inverse kinematics. And with that, I can trace out different shapes. Path planning deals with how to go from point A to point B in a finite amount of times. And there's a whole bunch of different ways of doing that. The objective here is to show you some of the methods and illustrate some of the problems with each one. And here we're going to use the Puma robot, tracing out a triangle in six seconds. To start with, let's use linear interpolation. With linear interpolation, I've got two points. Just draw a straight line between the two. And where you are at any given time is just proportional to how far you are through the time slot. For example, the program spline 1 just gives us two points, p0, p1, and t, say, take two seconds to go there, T is the time. Every 10 milliseconds, I go from point A to point B. Uh, and I'll just do proportional. This is how the percentage of time I am along the path going from point 0 to point 1. What that looks like, if I want to trace out a triangle, is this. I've specified the three points, P0, P1, P2. I'm going to move a linear speed between the two points, and this is linear in the tip position. The joint angles will be nonlinear, of course, to all these sines and cosines. Notice that at the endpoints, when I hit the endpoint, I'll immediately change direction. That's going to cause problems in a little bit. So let this dry out. When I'm all done, I can sit there and plot the angles that correspond to the program for tracing out that path. So these are the angles, q1, q2, q3. When I take the derivative, the derivative is basically the voltage that goes to a motor. The motor has step dose continuities in the derivative. The second derivative is the problem. The second derivative is acceleration. That's basically current. Because I have a step change in velocity, the current becomes infinity. And infinite currents tend to be a little bit of a problem. So that's one type of spun interpolation that has problems. I'm going to have a uh, non-differentiable second derivative, or second derivative is not finite. Second option. Let's do cosine interpolation. Instead of having a straight line going from point A to point B, I'm going to do a cosine. The cosine starts out flat and goes up and becomes flat. This is a cosine function that's going to have a finite or zero velocity at the two endpoints. This guy. So instead of ha having a go between 0 and 1 linearly, I'll have it go as a cosine function. What that looks like, if I speed it up now, it takes one second to go between point A and point B. Notice at the endpoints, I stop. That's the derivative of cosine of 0 at 0 and at pi, the right endpoint. If I look at the <clears throat> look at the angles now, angles look about the same. It's really more interesting to look at the derivative. This is the voltage of the motor, roughly. And the second derivative is current. That's torque. I now have finite second derivatives. That's a cosine interpolation. Um, I do have this jump discontinuity, though. The second derivative of cosine is minus cosine. So at the points 1 second and 2 second, or you go to the different path, I have this jump to discontinuity and acceleration. That's usually not a problem, but you're just going to have a big jump discontinuity in the acceleration of the robot. That's the second type of interpolation. Third type of interpolation. Let's do a cubic curve fit. If I, instead of having A going between 0 and 1 as a straight line, the first case, or a cosine, I could do a cubic function. If I want to force the velocity to be 0 at the two endpoints, I'll constrain x of t equals 0 at t equals 0, that makes t equals 0, plus x of 0 equals 0, the other way around, x of 0 makes t equals 0, the derivative of t equals 0 makes t equals 0, repeat at 1, and I get another type of interpolation. 
So I'm going to use a cubic function to go between the different points. It's similar to a cosine function. At the endpoints, the velocity is zero. Be a little bit different though, because the derivative of the cubic is a quadratic, so the velocity will be parabolas. Derivative of a parabola is a straight line. So here's the angles. Those are cubic functions. Velocity, these are parabolas. And acceleration will be straight lines. Uh, not quite straight lines because I have all these sines and cosines for a robot. That gives you jump discontinuity at these points as well. Uh, very similar to a cosine interpolation. Very hard to tell the difference. Kind of your choice. The last type of interpolation is I can combine those two. I'm going to combine a cubic and a cosine. So here this is the cubic function. So the velocity is zero. A has zero velocity at t equals zero at the right end point. Do a cosine. That's also zero at the two endpoints. Put the two together. And what you get is the velocity is zero at the two endpoints. It's got to go a little bit faster between the two. But now the velocity and the acceleration is zero at the two endpoints. The resulting path that I'm picking, the tip position, is such that when I'm done, this is what the joint angles look like. The velocities will be zero at the endpoints, that's one, two, and three. And now the acceleration is also zero. That's the idea behind path planning, is how to go from point A to point B. And a couple ways you can do it. Here we did linear interpolation, which is simple, but I wind up with jump discontinuities or infinite accelerations. Uh, cosine interpolation, which is pretty commonly used. Polynomial interpolation with the cubic, which really is about the same as cosine. And the most complicated one is combining the two, forcing the velocity and acceleration to be zero at the endpoints. The homework for this week is to pick a shape, you know, any old shape that you like, and then trace out that shape which basically means do a interpolation, a spline curve interpolation between the different points. Your choice of cosine, uh, cubic, or combining the two. The one constraint though is that I want to have finite accelerations at all points. So that's lecture number seven, path planning for EECE 761 robotics.